we will scan a faded vintage photo with a 24-bit scanner and then use a 24-bit imaging software to restore the contrast, brightness, and color shift of the photograph. I can't overemphasize this enough. Make sure that your scanners, firmware, and software, the software that drives the scanner from the computer, make sure both of those are downloaded from the internet and completely up to date because I've seen a scanner malfunction out of the box on uh, old firmware and the computer was unable to drive the, so the, the scanner until it had the latest up-to-date software, the software driver. If necessary, use a soft cotton cloth such as an undershirt rag dampened with a bit of water or a bit of alcohol uh, then use a blower to get rid of any remaining dust. Place your photograph square with the scanner. Fired up the scanner software and we go to click scan a document or photo. You want an everyday scan. So I will choose 3 by 5, five, uh, three by five inches by 5 inches and the output type choose color. Resolution again for this size photo is 1200 dpi. For this size photograph, 1200 dpi will allow us to print out at 8 by 10, even though the photo will look soft because the major dimension exceeds 3000 pixels, and with the 300 dpi print resolution, it will allow you to print out that size. Another way to think about this is that current today's, today's current digital cameras. Uh, exceed 3,000 pixels in one direction, so this just makes this photo scan equivalent to today's uh, photo pictures. Uh, do you want to reset to lower resolution? No. Okay, photo type, photo or document. This we're using doing a photo type of uh, file type. Choose a lossless format. That means do not choose JPEG. You will lose information right out of the gate. I'm going to choose TIFF. It's a, it's a standard file type. We manually place the photograph on the glass, so you just flatbed glass. Advanced settings, ignore everything you see on the screen. All you want is the destination tab. Now we set the file name and also the directory where you want this saved. Then hit scan for a preview. Brightness and contrast, leave those alone. This is a 24-bit office scanner. You do not have uh, the, um, it does not have all the adjustments. When you mess around with this, you're messing around with software. You're not changing the way the hardware is working. Now, the, the, because I placed the uh, photograph in the right position, I also took extra care to line up the photograph as best as I could have ma manually. In fact, if you find that this photograph is tilting a little bit, I would go back and do it by hand and then try again. The reason being is that the, though the, these um, the devices have the ability to do auto rotates to, to square up your image, if you do that, what you're not getting, you're not getting a scan. What you're getting is a scan and a transformation by the software. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and select the image, the parts of the image we want to scan. Okay, there. Come down here. This is just a rough rate this time. Eh, it looks good. Uh, this this uh, this photo has been trimmed with scissors, I think, at some point. It's un it's not squared up itself. So what I've done is I've made sure that the base is uh, horizontal as best as possible, and I, it looks pretty close. Now, as far as the top here, there's no information up here, nothing. So what I'm going to do is use the thirds rule. It's better composition if something an important uh, thing, something important in your photograph falls on a one-third line. And by what I mean is like, as we have it boxed in here, this would be one-third, this would be one-third. The point of interest is his eyes. So let's say that's at the two-thirds line. Here's the one-third. So let's make the, uh, in order to make that, uh, in order to make this the two-thirds line, we have to bring this down so it becomes two. So here we go. There's, there's 
the two-third line, the one-third line here. So that's you know it's an eyeball thing. It's this is uh, it's it's not a it's not measurement accurate. We do it by eyeball. So that's one, you know one-third line, two-thirds line, and more or less by eyeball. That's it. And it's just for sake of uh, better composition. <clears throat> now we're ready to scan. We want uh, we, we don't want to scan the original. We want to scan our selection, and we go ahead and hit uh, saved, and it's still working. And there we have it. Fire up GIMP uh, by just uh, clicking on its um, using its shortcut, but we're going to do, use a histogram. And in GIMP, all you do is go to Colors, ignore everything else, up in this menu here, you click on that, and then just ignore everything else, and you go to Levels. And then click on Levels. And here, what we have is a histogram. Uh, there. This is a histogram of the composite values, red, green, blue, all mixed up together, of the brightness and darkness of the pixels in your photograph. Like uh, these pixels here are up on this end, the white ones. The dark ones here are down on this end. Now you'll notice that uh, the brightness to darkness is, uh, is doesn't go full scale and also the picture is faded. So what it's done is uh, it's the information is collapsed in from the darkest to this point and from the brightest to this point. What we're going to do is we're going to take that uh, this, this histogram curve and we're going to stretch it all back out to be the full dynamic range of 0 to 255. So the way we do that is we take the slider for the 255 marker and we push it in to, you notice how the picture is getting brighter? So now the whitest brightest pixels are right at 255. The very brightest pixels are right at 255. Don't go too far because then you burn it out just like this is the problem with you know doing the contrast and brightness. You don't know where you are. You're just eyeballing it. You can burn out you know, patches here that have gone completely white. There's a lot of information that is just gone now. But we're going to go right to the very brightest pixels on the graph. And same thing with the dark pixels. And you'll notice how it's darkening up. So now we've got the full range. Now you can see this picture. So uh, what we've done is by doing this, we've brought back the dynamic range, some of the dynamic range of the original. So now we're just going to accept this. I hit OK. And we're going to go ahead and um, not going to use save because that saves out in the GIMP proprietary uh, format, which is it's just fine, but other other softwares don't necessarily see it readily. In fact, uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, you won't see the picture displayed as a thumbnail. So what we're going to do is we're going to export as a TIFF, and got to make sure you can see this here. Scan TIFF, but we're going to change the name now. Don't change your originals. That's what I got to Make sure you keep your originals. Now we're going to say make a copy, which is scan levels, which is because what called, or you could call it histogram, and then uh, composite. Composite for the fact that it's doing all red, green, blue all together. So composite TIFF, and it's a TIFF again. Export. Export. There we go. And you can see how uh, the compression is LZW, which is fine because it's a lossless compression. Uh, and then we just export it. And uh, we're going to. So there, now we can see there's the. You can see we have our original scan. And notice how much more brightness and contrast. Uh, but it has the sepia tone still. It kept the sepia tone because you did it as a, uh, as a composite values. Now we're going to go back. We're going to do the uh, very much similar thing that we just did. We're going to do it as uh, individual red, green, blue uh, 
values and you'll see what it, it's going to make a change to the, the photograph on your video screen what's going on all right now we're back to where we started and we're going to go to colors again and the levels ignoring everything else we don't need it right now don't have to worry about it right now worry about that other stuff later on when you're trying to learn it okay this is the composite values red green and blue all together now we're going to switch it over to red channel okay now do the same exact thing except you'll notice how the photo is pinking up here changing colors as I modify the scale which the information is displayed at and green that was green and now finally blue okay now it's interesting you'll notice that this thing looks almost like a black and white photo again which it started off as so what we've done in this type of adjustment we've gotten uh, we've brought back the brightness and contrast but we've also gotten rid of most of the color shifting uh, because of the you know red green and blue values uh, shifted to different amounts but so we just go OK and we're gonna go ahead and file and export as so there you go you can see now our original and the photograph that has been restored with a levels or histogram adjustment using the components RGB individually red green and blue individually just a reminder these things are way too big to email if you want to do that pop it back into GIMP and make a JPEG at about 91 or 85 uh, that uh, should put you in the ballpark of one or two megabytes that you can send around and they can print out at photo you know print out a photo quality resolution